All right, guys, this is incredible. 41, 42 watts. Wait till you see how much I got the solar panel shaded right now. There you go. I'm leaning, I'm leaning not only directly in front of it, but a little bit on each panel. <laughs> so this is a new solar panel, new solar technology from this EMFX company, which is actually based in Salt Lake City. So they do say this is shade stopper. It stops the shade from, it stops the shade from destroying your output, basically. So they do say this is a patent pending thing. So how does it work? Well, let's kind of, you know, let's take a step back here. Let's take a step back and just talk about what's going on with these solar panels. So, you know, in a typical solar panel, you do have two panels in these 100 watt, this 100 watt configuration, you do have two panels, right? And what will happen is if you do get a little bit of shade on any, <laughs> anywhere, anywhere on the panel, it basically drops the output of the panel. Like maybe you might get like 10 watts, <laughs> you know, maybe if you're lucky. So what we've kind of seen some other companies do, you know, if you ever see these solar panels that are advertised that it works better in the shade, like this panel here, they actually split it up into four sections and then each section is wired in parallel. So that basically just allows the panel, if you do get a little bit of shade, just say like right over here somewhere, yes, you know, you're gonna lose out on this entire section. You know, it's gonna drop to almost zero, just like those other solar panels. But these other three panels would still give you full output. So this obviously it works in some circumstances, you know, if you just get a little bit of shade, <laughs> but guess what? What if you get a little bit of shade over the entire panel, <laughs> right? Or maybe you just get some here, maybe you get some over here, something like that. I mean, that's the whole thing with shade and the, the trees and the, you know, the shape of the trees, the, the wind, the sun moving through the sky, <laughs> you know, it's, it's kind of an unknown thing. This is what makes it a problem. So, you know, if you do have a backyard, you know, that has a lot of trees or, <laughs> you know, maybe you live in an apartment and you just have a balcony. And so, yeah, this is probably the first solar panel that you could really use on an apartment balcony. You know, <laughs> you have these balconies, you might be getting full sun. You might, you know, the balcony might be getting full sun, but guess what? You got the railing, you got the columns, you got the overhangs that create all of these shadows. And so it can be almost like impossible to set out a solar panel on a balcony. You know, maybe, maybe you might find a good spot, but then, you know, 20 minutes later, the sun moves and, you know, then you get some shadow on it again. And you know, with a typical panel, you know, you're gonna get, you know, what? Five, 10 watts? Check this out. Look at this thing. 53, 53 watts with all of these shadows running running across the uh, the panel. And so, you know, you might be curious, you know, how does this thing actually work? Well, they're not gonna, you know, it's patent pending. They're, they're not gonna spill all their secrets here, but actually, if you kind of zoom in on this, I was kind of like really trying to get a good look at this thing. It's a little bit hard to tell because of the ETFE coating on it. That's got the little dimples on it that helps catch, you know, if, if, if you fail to angle it properly, it'll help catch the light. But yeah, you can kind of see, it looks like to me, it looks like there's a little microchip connected to each cell. So to each solar cell, it looks like they're monitoring each solar cell independently. And you know, if one, if there's a cell that's just not, you know, the output is, is not what it should be, at least in comparison to the other cells, it looks like they just bypass that cell. So th <laughs> this is actually, this is, this is awesome, really. So, you know, basically it doesn't matter where you have shade on the panel, you know. If there's sunlight somewhere on the panel, you're going to get that power. This sounds, it sounds great, but, you know, how, how expensive is this thing? Is it 300 Is it 400 uh, how about $98? <laughs> this is actually, this, wait, is this right? It's actually $88 if you use my discount code, 10% off right there. So, um, yeah, this is, 
this is an interesting strategy, I would say. This is for sure they're selling these panels at a loss at this price. But I guess, you know, it's a new company, it's new technology, and they really want to get their name out there. So yeah, how long <laughs> how long is the price gonna last like this? I you know, probably not long. And you know, of course they want you to get these things so you can start leaving some reviews and then you know it doesn't, you know, it doesn't look like some kind of unknown, you know, questionable product. And then you might also say, well, you know, maybe it is a questionable product. I mean, it sounds, it sounds too good to be true. So, you know, are there any cons? Yeah, there, there are some cons here, but it's not, nothing to do with like the build quality or anything like that. This is like, it's a solid like 10 pound panel. I mean, this is, it's not some real lightweight flimsy thing. I mean, yes, you want it to be portable, but you don't, you, know, you don't want it to flop over in the wind and fall apart on you. So yeah, it's got some good weight to it. ETFE coating, as I mentioned, you know, they didn't cheap out on this. It's not the cheaper PET coating. So yeah, you know, they got the good coating on it. How about the magnetic closure? It's got that, just like, that was like kind of what Jackery started doing, right? So it snaps closed. And the rest of it, yeah, it's got that Oxford cloth. So. To get into the cons, you know, there's no IP rating on this thing. It's not one of those panels that you can leave out. So, you know, if the, if that is something that is something that you want, you know, you're not going to get it with this panel. Now, the one thing I'll say is they did design this to at least resist, you know, a light rain for a few minutes. You know, I mean, if it starts raining, it's, it's not going to destroy the panel. Just go out there, bring it inside, wipe it down leave it folded out so it can dry before you fold it up you know if you do that it's going to be fine the thing that they mentioned that's the most sensitive actually is the little control box in the back but guess what they got that tucked behind a zippered pouch and it's got a really nice waterproof zipper on it as well so you know it's not waterproof not water resistant rated or anything like that but it is going to survive a light rainstorm and then to get into what is really the biggest con with this panel, it's the output cable by far. This is, this is the most disappointing part. Now, you know, if you've got a power station that's got like an eight millimeter input or actually the cord that they include is just the 5521, but they do give you the eight millimeter adapter. You know, if you've got a power station that uses that, then <laughs> there's, not, <laughs> there's not many cons here. But, you know, if you have something that uses XT60 or Anderson, those are kind of the other two, you know, most popular connections. Guess what? It's, you know, they don't, they don't give you anything. They don't, they don't give you. So you're kind of like, you're screwed. You know, basically, you, now, yes, you can find adapters. You can find cheap adapters. In this case, you would want to go from 5521 to whatever your power station needs. If you can't find that, you could go from the eight millimeter to whatever your power station needs, and then you'd have to use the eight millimeter adapter too that they give you, but you know, it would work. It's not ideal. But the one thing I would say too is whenever you're buying these cheap adapters, you really should check the uh, polarity of these. You know, sometimes they switch up the negative and positive and that could damage your power station. So yeah, include the right adapters here, you know, even if you have to raise the price by $5, you know, just include them. If you have, like I said, if you have the eight millimeter XC60 and Anderson, you pretty much got almost any power station covered here. Yeah, so hopefully you just kind of found this overview, of this new solar panel technology. Hopefully you found this helpful or interesting or something. If you did, make sure you give the video a like. And yeah, thanks for watching.